Hey, I'm Jonathan, and I live in London, England. Hey, I'm Jeff, and I live in Perth, Australia. Together, we are Echo and Sidetrack. We produce music that sounds like this. And this. And even this. This podcast is about music, creativity, and everything in between the giant space that separates us. Welcome to A Band Apart with Echo and Sidetrack. Welcome back to A Band Apart with Echo and Sidetrack. If it's your first time joining us, welcome. If it's your third time joining us, thanks for coming back. If it's your 19th time joining us, then you are one of the people that have listened to every single podcast. And that is something special worth commemorating. And we've got just the thing for you. It's a plaque with your name on it. And we'll be sending them out to all our favorite listeners. All you have to do is email in at uh, Echo and Sidetrack podcast at gmail.com and we'll send you out the plaque and you can hang it above your mantle or display it wherever you um, ever want to want to celebrate such a uh, an achievement. So, um, you know, email us or you can send us a fax. You've got the number. How are you, Jonathan? I'm good. I'm actually looking at my um, Clark decorative that I made clock you? now. Yeah, the 19th episode clock, which is pretty, pretty exciting. Uh, you know... For a while, I've there's been some um, importance for me around the number nineteen that I, I don't really want to get into on this podcast, but uh, it's a pretty special one here. Is it the? Uh, it's not the. Um, it's not the story about the baboons and when we're in. Uh, oh summer. no, <laughs> we should. We shouldn't. <laughs> we shouldn't say that. On, oh, we shouldn't say that live. But it's something just a bit private between ha- <laughs> between us that we might have to edit that going. out. We'll, we'll <laughs> okay. leave it in. It's like an Easter egg. It's an Easter okay. egg. Well, that sounds great. Uh, but in all I'm seriousness, good. <laughs> I'm good, buddy. <laughs> I'm good. Uh, what's, what's going on in my life? It's a bit windy today. That's what's going on. You know how everyone says like, ah, uh, you know, a conversation's going to shit when they start talking about the weather. Yes. Why is it the first thing that anyone always does? It's is common. Like, it's, this is, is it, is it because as humans you're trying to like, explain your current surroundings and that's how we judge our current surroundings to be it's like how are you going oh you know it's a bit windy outside i'm, I'm a bit cold my temperature is a bit cold like this is how i'm feeling oh uh, yeah you know like the weather's not bad that's why you go there because you're trying to express your current state no i think it's it's a common thing that will never uh kind of be uh, not relative, if you know what I mean, like a lull in the conversation. And you can just be like, man, it was hot today, wasn't it? It was so windy. Uh, and it, it's more than likely going to spark a co- part of a conversation because someone will go, oh, wow, I couldn't believe how cold it was today. And then someone goes, I wore my jacket in the office. And then and the- <laughs> Leonard kicks up and he goes, I love your jacket. I think it's, it's beautiful. And you go, I bought this when I was in southern Thailand. And then he starts telling a story about baboons. Yeah, okay. That makes sense. Does it? Yeah. Well, I guess I should tell you that um, I'm wearing long pants today because it's uh, slightly windy. Man, weather in this country could be anything. Like, Can you stand st- up? I think I just caught a glimpse of what kind of pants you're wearing. I'm wearing my, my, my freedom pants. You're wearing the pants. How They've good got- would it be if I'd stood up and my dick was just hanging out of these pants? <laughs> I've, for the listeners, I've just like stood up on, and on the camera. It's uh, The camera's focused right on my um, sheath or rod. Or sword. Your sword is your sword is sheathed. Sword, my sword is currently sheathed, um, and so it should be in the pants. In the pants that I bought, I nearly bought another pair of fucking pants off Instagram this morning. Burn me twice, Jeff. <laughs> Shame on me. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I didn't do it. They because they looked baggy and they looked good on the guy that um, was wearing them. But then I, I just couldn't trust. I couldn't trust the measurements. Yeah, how are you doing? Uh, I am doing pretty well. Yeah. Um, good. Just, uh, working out a few of my little systems for the next few days that is going to get, lead to getting the, um, the next single finished. Sick. 
Um, because I've realized that there's no one else going to finish it. It's up to me. Um, it's quite, it was just like a funny thing. You know, I was going to come here on to the studio on Sunday and I was really tired and I've um, prioritized doing some other things for myself, which I really liked. Then I was going to come last night, but I was, uh, really tired and I had to do a few bits and pieces. And I thought, I thought to myself, Oh, I wish I could like delegate part of this task to someone. But then I realized the tune is in such a position that it just needs to be finished. Um, and there is no, there is no one else to do it. I'm the person. And also, um, the song is all on Carl's computer because I'm mixing it down in Carl's room. Um, and I'm just feeling that thing, that little thing that comes as you hit like the 87% of a tune being finished, even 90%, and you go, oh, I've kind of lost some of the buzz on this tune. I would kind of rather work on something else, you know. And and part of that is actually fear of completion because it's much more perfect in its less than perfect state because you're like, oh, no one's going to be able to judge it. No one's going to be able to hear it. No one's going to be able to, you know, oh, you know, finishing it and delivering it makes it real. And, um, but yeah, you've got a deadline and you've got things to do. So that's up to me to get done. It's still the idea until you send off that pre-master, it's still the perfect idea in your head. And the closer you get to the deadline, any anything that says it's not that perfect pre-master is like, like you, you, you kind of drop off the things that are less important. It's like your boat is slowly sinking and you have to keep afloat to get to the other side and you've got all your luggage on you. And the closer you get to the other side, you're kind of steadily going down and you're like, well, maybe I don't need this second pair of shoes. Maybe I don't need this and maybe I don't need that. And as you're slowly getting you start to get to the other side, you realize like these are the essentials. This is what this is. This is how I finish the tune. You know, it's almost like you, there's sacrifices that you give up as you get closer to finishing a tune that lead, that kind of leads to the saying, um, like no song is ever completely finished. You know what I mean? Yeah, a a little bit. I think I'm just facing some resistance because it is close to being finished and it does sound pretty good. And I'm like, oh, how do you, how do you end this? And I kind of want someone else to come and like, give me a spark. But really, it's just about finishing the song. I feel so out of the process of writing this song. Even though we wrote this songwriting wise. We have worked on it together, but it definitely has been something that I've championed and pushed for. But like, I don't think, I don't really think it's changed that much from the last time I worked on it in in January, but there's a part of me that's like, you know, it's almost like you and Carl have worked on this song. You and Carl have worked on this song probably more, I don't know, more than me and you. Because it is, we finished, we had that version. It's mostly just been mix and like. It's just been some glue, man. Glue. But yeah, still, it feels like I'm so... I don't know. There's there's times that I really fucking just miss being in the studio with you. And this is one of those times where it's like, you know, you're going through this thing that I feel so detached from and that I can't really, um, I can only offer so much at this certain, certain point, this certain juncture. Yeah. I I definitely don't, I don't particularly need anything or, or anything like that. I just, it's, um, you asked me how I was, and that's where I'm at. Yeah, no. And I'm saying, I feel this is, I miss being there together in this time and to possibly aid in other ways, even if it's just be, being like, I'll just sit down on the comp- I'll sit down and do some stuff, and you can lie on the couch. And then, yeah, that, that sometimes just the little buffer you need. Or like that little spark of an idea that I've, that I that I have, allows you to get that 
your second wind, mm. or third wind, or whatever it is with the tune, you know? Yeah, I think um, I might actually, when the podcast is over, I'll chat to you about um, something which is either going to like spark me on or or not. But yeah, really, I'm just at this point where I'm like, in my head, I'm like, there is a deadline. I need to just do this deadline because no one else is going to do it. And really, no one else is going to, yeah, no one else can do it. So it's just like, yep, all right, get on with it. I also hear Carl's voice in this instance being like, it's it's done. It's like you're you you're almost wanting permission, like you're 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 wanting permissions for someone to be like, yes, that's enough, that's done. Mm. You know, obviously there's there's things to work on, but like you want that other person to be like, it's fine. I it's actually completed. think it's, I actually think it's even closer than that, and I'm just being lazy. Okay. So how about that? Um. Well, it's now been nearly 20 minutes into the podcast and I know there's some listeners absolutely itching Mm. to hear a story from you, Jonathan. We left off the last podcast talking about some of your performance hard-ons and you started telling a story and now we should dive right back in. Okay. So set the scene. If you've read our bio, you knew, you know that Jeff and I we're in a band together before we formed Echo and Sidetrack. Uh, it was a band with two of our uh, two of Jeff's friends, Shane and John. We made some pretty cool songs. Yeah, man. That was the closest we had to coming, I don't know, fucking writing like good originals, in my opinion. We never recorded any of them. No, we had like five good like kind of, kind of stoner stoner rock, like somewhere between Queens of the Stone Age, mixed with Arctic Monkeys, kind of. It was feel. a bit trashy, but then there were some things that sounded a bit like Tool in terms of it. They're like melody. Yeah, and like man, Shane was such a good bass player. Like he lifted oh, yeah. everyone's oh yeah um thing, Massively. and then like. Yeah, everyone was working really hard. So yeah, we're in this in this little band, and um, and we're going to perform at my twenty first birthday. It got to is this correct? Did it get to a point and like Shane didn't have time, and Johnny didn't have time, and then we performed with just you, John, and I for fun, or could Shane not make it to your twenty first? So it was just you, John, and I. Was the band already starting to dissipate before your 21st? I'm not sure. I can't really remember. Yeah, maybe Shane couldn't come. Maybe we had, st- maybe the band had actually started to dissipate. Um, and we could pontificate on why. But um, yeah, I think it just had or it maybe started to slow down at the start of the year or something. And then it just turned into me, you, and John going to perform a a few songs or maybe Shane was there like I can't really remember because we also had the turntable with some like CDJs set up yeah I I feel like Shane wasn't there okay either way either way we the band's slowly slowing down in pace and Jeff's 21st birthday is coming up his 21st birthday is going to be one of the first bigger parties that's happened in house and the Hanson household, I believe. Yeah, for sure. I want to say. Uh, and it is rock star themed. So it's dressed as your favorite rock star. Um, I just want to say, John Bon Jovi was not my favorite rock star, but I decided to dress <laughs> as him. Slash isn't my favorite rock star either, man. But I, I dressed as Slash because it was just like... But like quintessential rock stars, basically. When Tim turned up with no shirt and just a pair of pants and he looked exactly like Iggy Pop, like oh, man. ripped the shit and just and it was like bang, Iggy Pop. It was it was so sick. We had the Beatles there. Um you know, it's all sorts of people. Cindy Lauper. Yeah. Man, I've got a fo- I've got a photo somewhere. I I have to dig it out. Justin was Rick James. It was amazing. <laughs> it was <laughs> with like that just the hair. Oh man! Like maybe we can, um, yeah. There'll be a photo we can use for the headline or something. Um, and yeah, so you're turning twenty-one. I'm seventeen. Uh, 
I invite a girl um, to the party. Um, it's a girl I liked at the time. Um, and we we had a great night. We're drinking and laughing and we perform. And we've, I swear, I think we performed for like 20 minutes. We played like five songs, played uh, Wolf's, a Wolf Mother song. Yes, we did play a Wolf Mother song. Played a Wolf Mother song, played a Blink song, Josie. Yep. We picked five or six songs and, um, yeah. and but like, like performed them. And, and, like, and the way the room was set up as well, like we opened this corner room that became eventually became the studio. That was the jam room for the longest time. And we opened the, so- the door and the window so yeah. people could see us. So it was like corner glass. People could see us, and the sound didn't completely blow them away. So it actually would have sounded quite cool. Yeah, like, you know, we didn't mic anything. We just like had amps and stuff. But yeah, we performed, and I think it sounded pretty good. And then, yeah, it was like you know we're getting on the mic and drinking and getting crazy. And then we sung, we sung "Happy Birthday" to you. Yes. Um, and it was a good night. And then, at some point, we me and the girl I was with escaped to my room to begin my sexual journey. <laughs> was this premeditated? Um, or, I can't Or do you remember. think she just got so interested in you because you were <laughs> performing? No, like we, we'd, um, we'd like fooled around before but never had sex and... I would like to think that it was because we fucking rocked out so hard. And I was like, it was just a moment where she was very attracted to me. That's what I'd like yeah. to think. And she was like, so. let's. And I th- also think she, she had voiced, she had, said she had wanted to, to be the one to, she's the one that wanted to show me the delights of the human body. For the first time. Induct you into the sexual pantheon. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great way to say it. Um, so we went off and escaped into my bedroom for, <laughs> for what was a very nice time. Um, halfway through, there's a rap at the door and it's mum and she kind of like, I kind of blocked the door slightly. But she you kind would of have pushed. jumped off that bed so I, quickly. I jumped off and just like, no, 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 like we're getting changed, we're getting changed. And then I think she knew that it was not a good time to come in anyway. And then I think we continued and then the deed was done and I, I remember going outside and having a cigarette. Um, we, we went out and had a cigarette. Oh, fuck. Okay. Grab so yourself I can't, a cold one. I can't, I can't, okay, so I can't remember if, if she, no, okay, so what happened, we went back into the party, having fun, uh, and then she, she got picked up, she got picked up at like 12 or something, um, and I think after that, I went around the corner and had a cigarette, and I remember smoking a cigarette with a Webster, and I was like, I, and Tim, I don't think Tim was having well, maybe Tim was having a cigarette. I don't know, but like I remember being out there and being like, I I had sex for the for the first time tonight, and they were like, Yeah, man, <laughs> fucking <laughs> sex, <laughs> <laughs> fucking Bon Jovi had sex. <laughs> yeah, it was um, it was nice. I don't know. I thought it was quite cool that it was at a party like that, and I was dressed as. Bon Jovi. It's weird. It's weird to think about now and reflect upon. They're kind of moments that you don't really reflect upon that much. That you just, they're like pinnacle life moments. Like everyone thinks about the first time they have sex. Everyone thinks like before you do it, it's like this. Oh my God, when's it going to happen? How's it going to happen? What's going to happen? And then, like, 
sex becomes kind of not completely normal, but pretty normal pretty quickly. It's still an amazing thing, but like, it's it's just amazing that someone agrees to like to have sex with you, you know, and like you think before you do it, it's like this. I don't know, difficult thing to do. It's like, how, how do I get this thing? How do I, how do I achieve it? And then it's done and it's like, you don't reflect on it again, really. Like, I haven't really thought about the first time I had sex until we were talking about it last week. You know? Yeah. And I mean, to you kind of, it's pretty, it's pretty like fun little story because you like kind of got the sneak off from the party and be like, Oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. It's like, it would have been quite uh, full of adrenaline and um, yeah, it would have been exciting and fun. And yeah, it relates into the, the performance thing because someone was super impressed with you and going like, Oh, that's appealing and attractive. And I think we see that in, in lots of people, you kind of, you know, mm. seeing anyone do anything that's impressive and you go like, Oh, that's, that's attractive in a mate kind of thing yeah a hundred percent like that that's how you find people that you're attracted to you see them usually do something impressive not impressive always in a performance um in regard to performance but it could just be how they deal with it in a situation or they make you laugh or they uh are assertive or they surprise you in some way that you're like oh that's impressive uh you're an impressive person and i want to hang around with you more yeah. Um, do you want to talk about some of your performance hard-ons? Because I talked about my performance hard-ons. And these aren't times when we've been performing and we've had a hard-on. I've been erect every single time I've been behind the deck since 2007. Erect on the decks. <laughs> DJ erect. Uh, that's my wedding, DJ uh, name and if you'd like to book me, get in touch again. You know the email. Yeah, erect on the decks or otherwise. I've um enjoyed the yeah performing. I was I was thinking about this after having the conversation we had last week mm. that was recorded. That becomes a podcast. I um I was thinking like when. When would be one of my earlier times of getting adoration and like attention? I tried to mm. think of that because I then thought of uh, two or three other times there was like a definite a performance aspect um to it. Um, and one point I kind of boiled it down to. And fucking funny, actually speaking, this is just solely off topic. I try. I was like, you know, was it, did it happen in pre-primary? Was it in year one? Was there like something? And I tried to like cast my mind back. That's a lot. That's a fair chunk of time ago. And I actually remembered. I whipped out my dick in year one and sh- showed it to the girl <laughs> next to me. What and I got, I got sent to the principal's office. Really? And yeah, and I was like, what the fuck? Like, where was that memory? Like. <laughs> you absolute pervert. You're going to get fucking cancelled for that admission. <laughs> it was like, and like, I remember what? going to the principal's office and being like, just like trying to talk my way out of it. And I would have been six. That's crazy though. That's like, funny. I'm like, I was thinking, was I'm it? like, that's... Go on. <laughs> no. <laughs> Do you remember how you were thinking? Were you just like... Like an animal. <laughs> I don't know. Like, I remember being like, nah, I don't. I just, like, remember being like, uh, yeah, uh, fuck knows. What are your th- thoughts? <laughs> but when you're that, you know, that... The- it's not, it's it's a doodle. It's not even a it's, dick. Oh, it's not a dick. It's a doodle. <laughs> At that time, you're just showing, you're showing people anything. Yeah, it's a you, piece It's of more skin. inquisitive. It's look yeah. what, it's look look what this finger does. I know a, someone that stood up in, in year one and just started <laughs> piss, pissing on the seat. <laughs> Just because it was like it wasn't, he was. It was. It was less of an act of like, defiance. Defiance. It was just like, why not? Yeah, I don't know what um, what compelled me, but yeah, that was a funny memory that I had. Um, I hope the girl isn't too 
shook by it. Um, <laughs> shook by a do- to be shook by a doodle. I like I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think I can. A seal got kissed by a rose, Jonathan. You could get shook by a doodle. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but it led me to, uh, go a little bit further in the future. And I think it was when I changed schools, when I moved schools, uh, moved towns, cities from Kalgoorlie, where we lived up until 1993 from 1989, uh, to Perth. And I came to the school and within the first week, uh, you know, I was a new kid. I pro- I definitely cried when I first went on the first day. I was just like, you know, walk down those driveways at Sorrento Primary. Shout out to Sorrento Primary. I cried. That, like the first man, but this is In a year, year three, five. I, yeah, when I was going to school. <laughs> <laughs> um, and uh, and I, you know, I was like, oh, how do I fit in? Like, you know, um, <laughs> whip your dick out. <laughs> yeah, it was probably like on my mind. Like, this oh, this worked in could- Kagoolie. Maybe I could do it in Perth. They're, for- they're more forward thinking in Perth. They're more liberal. Maybe they're into that kind of thing. Look how close to the beach we are, essentially. Um, uh, no, I think I, I was like, I'd made friends with a few of you guys, like, you know, at lunch or just like whatever. Did um, you know anyone? Did you know? Was there anyone else? No, from Kagoolie. No, I didn't know anything. Perth. No, like the uh, no, um, you know, if, if Mum was listening, she'd probably be like, "Oh, this person was here, or this person was here. like." But it, I was, I felt this is, I felt completely alone, and I was just sitting yeah. next to some people, towards you know, um, at the side of the class because this class was kind of set up in a big U shape, yeah. Um, and um, and we had we had art, uh, one afternoon, probably that like third or fourth day I was there, and the teacher put, um, a shoe in the middle of the class and said, everyone draw the shoe. And within like 10 minutes, the girl next to me, um, Ashley Lowe, shout out to Ashley Lowe, um, was like, Oi, what? Like, what's going on? Like, what? Like, <laughs> That's look, such what's a good going Ashley, Ashley what's impression. What's happening here? <laughs> like, she was just like, Oi, what's hey, going on? <laughs> what is happening? Like, oh my God. Like, what's, going on like and i was like oh what like am i you know i was like oh fuck i don't want to stand out like i don't want to do anything wrong and she's like your shoe looks so different to mine and i looked over and she was drawing a shoe like a an eight-year-old would draw and i had, was taking more time to you know get the perspective right and get some shading right and i'd done an outline and and then the kid next to me on the other side was like whoa like what's going on and then other kids started crowding around and then the teacher kind of came over and like it became this, th- and like I was like, "Oh, what's, what's happening?" And it just became apparent that I could draw really well, yeah. And that this like skill that, uh, yeah, I, I was always into drawing. We really liked drawing, and um, it's actually something I need to, um, I want to cultivate getting back into. Um, but it, it seemed like such a natural thing to be good at, and then it became. It's like this realization that, like, oh, you're special. You're different from some yeah. of the other kids. You and can I was get attention like, for this thing. Well, not even. I was just like, oh, this is interesting. And the teacher was like, wow, that's really good. J- Jeff, wow, this is amazing. And then all of a sudden, everyone knew my name. And um, and I was like, not the weird new kid from Kalgoorlie, which I don't think I ever was. Um, But I was like, you know, because I probably made a few kids laugh or something, you know, got my dick out. No. Um, uh. No, I don't know. There were some things, but that was a point. That was, you know, this, this, they should, I drew this shoe. Yeah. That everyone was like, wow, that's really impressive. And, um, uh, so I think that would be the first time I, you know, in, you know, that I felt that special thing. Like I've done a thing that's like pretty unique to me. And, um, and people have given me some adoration for it. Then, um, then over the years in primary school, there were just like other little things, um, you know, I like wanted to spearhead making a puppet show in year four with two of my mates where we like drew the backgrounds on blackboards and we'd spend lunch times in there making the back, um, the backdrops look really cool and like drawing in chalk and trying to make it look like realistic and stuff and doing the shading. 
and then like writing this like kind of script for this puppet um play or something that was it was it was part of the a cl- classwork but we were putting extra effort into it mm. um and then in year 5 telling news and like doing Jim Carrey impressions in 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 news like like you know I oh, were meant to be yeah. telling like news like on on the weekend my dad took me to the beach and there was a lot of seaweed and it smelled pretty bad thank you very much and that's the end of my news but i was like all righty then and like just doing fucking like whatever Bits. like being jim carrey contorting my impressions. face and like impressions. impressions and like probably some robin williamsy kind of stuff yeah. like in front of the class i see robin i see robin when i look into you oh thanks buddy um i hope he's smiling down on me i, th- um, I think he's definitely smart not that you ever knew him or he ever knew you but i do think he in some way does smile down on us when we do funny shit <laughs> um <laughs> shout out to robin williams um <laughs> then in year six there was a very definitive moment where i i guess i you know expanded on that that thing i think i'd probably by this time i may have done some like debate like there was like yeah, I know there was inter school, but it was like inter like inter class debate. So you know, I'd done a little bit of public speaking or whatever, and then every um every student had a a time to, you know, again it was like news but expanded. Like you had four minutes or something to fill, and you could bring in um uh bring in something to talk about or something like that you know if someone brought in their dog or you know something like a show and tell an show and tell tell. show and tell is the word i'm looking for and i know there was one particular character quite a um he's quite a menace to the teachers um uh he brought in the offspring album smash and he was like, oh, I bought this song, I bought the CD, and it's really good. And and it was he was doing it after lunch, and everyone, all us guys knew what he was going to do. He was going to play Bad Habit, and he was going to play it really loud, especially when it got to that bit in the uh, the bridge, which is um, famous just like, you stupid goddamn no good motherfucker! Or like, well, I could, don't even know what the exact words are, but it's like, heaps of swear words and and you know to to 10 year olds that's just like this is gonna well 11 year olds this is gonna be crazy oh, and yeah. like the so the song went along and you could tell the teacher was like well you know this is fine it's loud you know loud brashy punk music or whatever not thinking about it and then Do you remember who just, the teacher was mrs mrs pitt yeah um okay. and and this guy was standing near the CD player and you just this look on his eyes was like, it's going to happen and this is going to fucking cause some chaos. <laughs> and it went to it. And the teacher got up so quickly and ran across the room and like turned it down, like, you know, stopped the CD player and like, you know, what are you doing? Like, you get, get outside. And like, you know, and he was just laughing and the whole crowd, the whole like crowd, the whole class was laughing. <laughs> and like, so this is, this is the, speck of show and tell it ranged from yeah. kids bringing animals or like talking about their fucking hermit crab to you know someone playing offspring do i and do was it riley it was yeah may he rest in peace yeah. um and so one day after lunch they were like it's your turn jeff and i got the class to uh, like they they were sitting maybe it was after like we had been reading another um, story on the uh, or doing something in the front of the class, yeah. Um, because all the kids were in the front of the class and the teacher was there as well, and she was like, "Oh, you can just stand up here and do your news." And I had prepared nothing. I had said that I might tell a story. I think. Okay. And so I proceeded to tell a story. That involved, um, you know, a bunch of people going to an island, um, uh, finding some dinosaurs. Um, there was uh, a cast of characters that interacted with each other. There was 
um, callbacks and comedy moments. And the story went for five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. Whole, I had the fucking class in the palm of my hand and the teacher was sitting there just like looking at me being like, yeah, keep going. I, I, I don't, like, this is great. Like she was enthralled as well. I was like, I kept calling back to this Nest Cafe brings us, Blend 43 brings us all together. For some reason, that was like a punchline. Like as though like, the, you know, certain characters would say, I couldn't remember the story if you yeah. had held a gun to my head. It's amazing. But the story, Story. I would have told us that story, and like hit certain points and wound it up, and like had it was a story. It wasn't just waffle, and it, it would have gone for twenty five minutes, and then and I finished it, and then people were just fucking dumbfounded. Like no no clap, no none. Just like kind of looked at me like they'd been laughing and everything, and then like maybe there was like clapping and like oh thank you Jeff that was amazing, and then like the teacher was like. That was really like special. Like you should think about trying to write that down, or you know, and like you know, everyone was just like, "Whoa, man, that was crazy!" Like again, just that like adoration for doing something that I that came reasonably naturally. Yeah. Um. And again, yeah, just that like I yeah, like I said, I couldn't tell you the story, but it was. I remember just being like. It talk about flow, like I was just in it, like had there were like a, a cast of characters, the military people that were going and doing something. I, I don't know, but I know that Nest Cafe Blender Forty Three brings us all together was definitely a callback, like a joke, and then a callback as I went along. Clearly, in our lives, performing has taken a pretty important part like a pretty important role it's both something that we both really love and from a young age we both got attention and kudos for performing right specifically Mm. in primary school both of us have leaned towards comedic or storytelling or like public speaking um uh, the other thing i was i was going to mention was i remember you and ash were um, in that airplane you were the pilot in that airplane yeah in in year seven in the play, but, man, I I didn't get cast in the actual play because the drama teacher didn't Thought believe. You were too good. <laughs> no, she she didn't believe she could kind of control me to the script. Like <laughs> yeah. I, man, honestly, honestly, <laughs> and um, I I got m- me and Taryn had the job of um, like doing the voiceover, so I was doing accents and doing yeah. all sorts of things. But I had the script there in front of me, and I wasn't on stage. Yeah, but I remember thinking, why didn't I get one of the roles? Like, th- why did this dweeb get it? Yeah, I'm clearly funny because it's almost like she was like, I can't trust that guy to stay on book. <laughs> like- yeah, improvisation, Jeff. You, you're, you can't be controlled. <laughs> well, I can, I can, and but I won't. No, um, but yeah. So I was saying like. There's these moments we're performing, right? Yeah. Why don't you think either of us continued on with doing more of like a public performing kind of thing? I mean, like I did drama and, and studied drama in high school. You, I think I mentioned last week that I didn't... I realized that I didn't have the drive and love of acting that I would need to make that a actual career. But what do you think happened in like, what do you, why do you think that shifted to, towards music more for both of us? Because we both still really like performing. We like, you know, we love acting in our little videos or we're pretty <laughs> happy to speak on microphones or, you know, we emceed, we emceed Tony and Tasha's wedding together. Yeah. Like we we we've done these kind of performance things that feel great when you do it, but why don't you think? Why do you think we chose our specific kind of performance? Okay, I've got. I think the most base, like the most basic response, the 
the response that just like, as soon as you said that was right there, mm. it's because I, it, doing drama didn't sit with my personality in high school as I was like, you know, a skateboarder, I liked punk music. I wanted to be uh, liked and quote unquote cool. And I thought I was, and drama didn't kind of come into that. Drama was a bit of its own kind of click. And to yeah. be honest, didn't really get on with the drama people because they were, you know, we can see them now. You, you've we've all met drama people, and you're like, eh, yeah, all right, mate. Well, it's the people. I mean, it's the difference between someone that enjoys attention and someone that needs attention. Yeah, and I think and I, there's a lot of people in the arts and the dr- dramatic arts that that need that validation that are the loudest loudest voice in the room or like the the performer they're the 24 hour performer yeah and i and to be honest some of the people in that were doing the drama like i, I got on with them but i was like that's they're not my people and that's like yeah. you know i found that you know i again i want i didn't want to stick to the script i didn't want to do some other exercises i remember doing drama in year nine just being like yeah this is not really what i want to spend my elective on and there's a music elective and i'm going to do art so yeah that's what i chose to do and, and we we and- prefer the act like the un it's almost like we should have been we should have just done a hundred hundred percent improvisation and like being in an improv troupe or something rather than like a structured structured performance like we would always the thing we we both like is kind of going off script and and saying the thing that the funny thing that comes into our head, which is usually funnier than what's in the actual script. Yeah, I, I mean this perfect case in point was, um, so doing the music, uh, and playing again now it was performing for shows and like doing shows in year eight, nine, doing a subject called Music and Society, which basically meant you form a band and you just practice and play and do whatever. And the, you'd play a song at the, end of the, at the end of the term and the teacher would grade you on how well you rehearsed the song. Mm-hmm. Years later, we'd found out it was, it was a class solely set up so the, te- the two teachers could sleep together. Um, Did that come and, out as public knowledge? Uh, well, it is now. Um and no, it definitely came out as public knowledge. If 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 high school kids know about it, fuck, they yeah. yeah. Um, uh, and but so like we're doing that, and then that continued throughout the whole of high school. And then um, getting a little bit ahead of myself, but I'm going to come back to the improvisation thing. Um, when uh in year twelve, John from the band and Scott who we've talked about before in the band, we wanted to do a lunchtime concert because one of mm. the other things that stuck with me uh, from a performing perspective is when I was in year eight, there was a band that performed at lunchtime and I was like, that's the coolest fucking thing in the world. Like, are you fucking serious? Like, a band of students just played like Metallica and like you know, absolutely slayed on the guitar. And I was like, that is, I want to do that. Like whatever, however we get there is, I want to do that. So in year 12, John and I, with the help of um, some teachers set up doing a lunchtime performance and we performed like we were fucking blink one, eight, two, like talk to the crowd, like yelled at kids to get, buy us an ice cream from the, canteen like you know gave shit to teachers like laughed swapped swapped instruments played different songs like again the bell went and people didn't want to go they just like hung around it was like again that that performance thing was like oh i can do anything like this is sick i still remember walking from the math block to my locker and you guys had started performing and i felt embarrassed I was in year eight. Jeff was in year twelve, um, and I, I remember being like, "Fuck, my brother's like, he's performing like oh, I'm the younger brother, like oh. <laughs> <laughs> and struggling." And then I kind of sat down because people would be like, "Is that your brother?" And be like, "Yeah," like, and I didn't, I don't know if I knew how to feel about it. Um, and I remember, uh, what song is it where it was like, a lag wagon song, a no effect song. It's like. 
I had my thumb up in her country music oh, playing on the radio, on the radio so, I so I turned it, turned it off. off. We, we walked down, down to, to the, the water, water. Man, as she the fact grabbed said, onto my honker. Yeah, country music on the, the radio. Fact that you was... said that <laughs> at high school <laughs> was fucking mind blowing. And that was an interlude song, man. That was a song between playing. And- uh, you know, something else. I, I've got to dig out the recording of that. Man, it's incredible. The, I remember listening back. I would listen back to that recording and be like, fuck, that's cool. Maybe that's what started my my kind of me. No, I had always looked up to you, but I remember listening back to that and being like, that's like my brother's fucking cool. I remember thinking that. Thanks, and it's like playing, playing it. By myself and listening to it. And that's what probably inspired me to do exactly the same thing when I was in year 11. Yeah. Because like, the fu- the funny thing is, during this performance, we played the song um, Waggy by Blink-182 off their Beach album Dude, Dude Ranch. And there's a line just before the guitar solo that says, and I'll just jack off in my room until then. And then <sighs> the chemistry that. teacher was walking towards <laughs> us through the crowd on the footpath and he kind of looked at us and just perfect timing. I just said, you'd like that, wouldn't you, Mr. Shaddock? Mm-hmm. And everyone laughed. The whole fucking yeah. school's laughing. Yeah. That, this and, is a quadrangle in front of 500 people. Yeah. And there's like, they were spread out and they're doing whatever, you know. Yeah. Not we're, everyone's not everyone's paying attention. Well, yeah, but still there's, yeah. Yeah. And, and just, I just remember being like, it, did, oh, it wasn't like, I'm going to zing him. I was just like, you know, there's a joke. I'm just going to, you yeah. know, improvise, do this. And yeah. he, he, this look he gave, like, just like, fuck you, man. Like He, he would have I, thought did, about like, that for so long, being like, that kid is a little fucking cunt. Man, I remember seeing him, quick side note, I remember seeing him one year out of high school with um, two of my mates at Target. And the two mates I was with, both were in his chemistry class. I got out of his chemistry class um, because I wasn't very good and I didn't care and he didn't like me. Um, but he, they were standing there going like, oh, I'm doing this at uni. I'm doing this at uni. And he was like, what are you doing at university, Jeff? And just to piss him off, I was like, I'm doing chemistry. It's so much easier in university when you have a good teacher. <laughs> <laughs> and like, <laughs> like, what a little fuck face. Like, <laughs> and he That's just so looked good. at me like, Fuck you, <laughs> child. So, so good if he was just like, you were such a piece of shit, Jeff Hansen. <laughs> you fucking piece of shit. You told me you'd, you'd think I'd like it to see you jack off in your room. I still remember that, you little fuck. <laughs> and I'm sure he was a great guy. He just he, he just didn't yeah, like he, get on with me. And I was being cheeky, man. So cheeky to but that's, so many that's teachers. The, Again, I saw it as a place to fucking perform. Like I would the, say things to teachers to like... I'll make my friends laugh, but I'm getting kicked the fuck out of this class. But you, but that's what divides people. We were talking about last week, how like some people like us, really like us, and some people don't really like us. I remember at school, some teachers already hated me because of you, and some teachers fucking <laughs> loved me. I literally, uh, Mr. Manier, like an English teacher, was one of them. He was like, Jonathan Hansen, you're Jeff Hansen's brother. And I was like, yeah. And he was like, sick. And we had a great relationship. He was my English teacher for two years. And we had a great, great relationship teacher. throughout the whole year. Mr. Gaby, uh, Mr. Volprick, the fucking yep. phys, phys ed teacher, he fucking did not like me. And I didn't like him. But he, he it's funny because we, by the end, we had a rapport that was we like, never... but still he definitely didn't like, he definitely didn't like how cheeky I was. Because I would I mean, sass them. Yeah. I was a fucking kid sassing adults. And you'd yeah. be like, you know, what the... Man, I got got. I got... I, You know, if I was an adult and some 17-year-old got me good, I'd be like, you son of a bitch. I'd Especially if I was a it. teacher. I'd respect I'd, it. But if I was a teacher, like, lo- talk about losing authority. But you can't like, have... You, when you're a teacher, you can't be like, that was pretty funny, man. Because what you do, because you're dealing uh, with a child who's... Who doesn't understand like, hi, oh, yeah, I was funny. But you know what? I'm not going to do that all the time. You're dealing with yeah. a child who's going through puberty that's like, I just got rewarded for something I shouldn't have done. I'm just going to do this every day. And then- Perhaps if I kill him, I can bang all the women. <laughs> <laughs> and then they, they, like, they run away with it. You know, they don't- yeah. I don't think as a, as a teenager, you've got that 
reasonable mind state. So you have to just be authoritative and be like, no, none of this, this can't happen. Unless you're an art teacher or a drama teacher. Then yeah, you well, can you, kind of do whatever you want and be you're relaxed. Encouraging crea- and, yeah, you're encouraging creativity. Yeah. Um, what I was going to kind of uh, get to after that performance, one of the teachers, the music teacher saw it and he said, um, look, I think you guys put on a really great show at lunch. I thought it was really funny, very charismatic. Would you please, we've got a, you guys have never been part of the music department as such. We were never part of any of the bands like the jazz band or the big band or any of these yeah. things. But he's like, we've got the end of year performance for the the school band or one of the school bands, like the intermediate concert band or something. And we're playing some songs from the Blues Brothers movies. Would you and John come and be the Blues Brothers and perform three songs on this night? And we, it was a week out and we probably rehearsed together once or twice and then with the band like once or twice and just, you know, just singing, just like, you know, we didn't sing. We, you know, we sung in our band, but not, yeah. not nothing else. And they're like, we, uh, John and I were like, yeah, we'll do it if we get suits and stuff like that and like get the whole get up. And we, um, we were just get meant to like come in and perform the songs. We're doing, um, I can't even remember now. Shake Your Tail uh, Feather? Shake Your Tail Feather was one of them. Um, if you haven't seen the Blues Brothers movie, the original, please do yourself a favor. I'd even say even Blues Brothers 2000 is worth a watch. Yeah, absolutely. But watch the, the original first. Oh, yeah, the original is the one. Absolute fire. Um, and instead of just like coming, we were just meant to come down the front of the, the middle of the auditorium, which you know, had a few like big steps in it. Um, not a huge room, but like, you know, had a few like long steps. And me and John were standing outside and just like getting that early adrenaline, just like, oh, we're going to perform, we're going to perform, this is going to be sick. And we opened the door and they gave us kind of, I think they played the audio from the Blues Brothers, like, and make noise for the blue, like the Blues Brothers, and like, yeah, and instantly, rather than walking down, I just started running, like high, high legs, just started running, like Dan Aykroyd's character in the movie, just like doing yeah. something crazy, and like, yeah. and then John started like walking down, like shaking people's hands, and like, yeah, yeah it's like, and people are like, what the hell is going on? Yeah, and then we got to the mics, like the band just had to play, like you know. They were waiting, you know, waiting probably like, yeah, they were probably going to wait like eight bars and then we were going to start. They would have played for a little bit like we're getting into it. Oh, hello. And we gave like a, a little introduction, like like the Blues Brothers, Blues Brothers do, like, yeah. well, the Blues Brothers, like, you know, this spiel. And then we launched into the songs and smashed it. And the fucking band was amazing. And like, it was, it was so cool. And it's the principal who had had his dealings with me during school. Mm. Um, came up to us both at the end and was like, wow, that was really spectacular. It's, uh, didn't see much of that during the last few years, did we? <laughs> and we both fucking laughed. It was like, it was, but like, yeah, I don't know. It was, again, just that like performance thing. And I, I suppose that just kicked off. I mean, that, that kind of ended high school and then we did the band thing and, you know, were at uni and, um, and then kind of fell into DJing because we wanted to play music, play at parties. I would DJ at people's, I DJed at people's 21sts. Well, there's that, that photo of, um, you and I playing together at, it wasn't Byron's twenty first. Mickey's. Was, um, that was Mickey's. Mickey's twenty first. That might have. That wasn't Mickey's twenty first. That was just a party Mickey had in that year, because we were doing everyone's twenty first, and like it just became this thing. Like John and I would DJ, and like, um, you know, I've a DJ. I remember DJing Peter Culver's and like trying to rehearse like an actual set. Mm. Like, you know, I started with the intro from um, DJ Cray's Drum and Bass Warfare. Um, would have played like 
Another Planet would have played that cold, um, the chemist Stand remix. Clear. The chemist yeah, remix played, Cold Cut. Yeah. Um, you know, uh, we probably played like you know, tried to mix in some MIA or some shit. Yeah. Um, and you know, all this, you know, and I DJ'd my mates' parties up until I've done friends. I, you know, uh, whenever there would be a house party, they'd be like, "Do you want to DJ?" And they would just again, just that crazy thing. Like that was even before we were DJing out as Echo and Sidetrack, or just before that, because I had the turntables for a year. And then we um started trying to get shows and went and got asked to play and yeah I suppose that's kind of, yeah kind of how it all came together. I remember the band was struggling to get together for practice. John had a lot of work on because he was working in hospitality. Other people wouldn't come, and then we'd just jam. And then we went away for a holiday, a family holiday in two thousand and eight. And I'd started producing um, music on Ableton because a mate from work had shown me Ableton. Well, before that, we'd started fooling around on um, Garage Band. On, on, on your little, on ga- yeah, actually, actually on, on that Garage G5. Band. Yeah, on um, G4. G4. Um, uh, on Garage Band, yeah, we'd been, which we'd been fucking around with my mates since high school. Like, we'd get yeah. stoned and make raps. And yeah. um, we'd like do like just play <laughs> loops, and while everyone was playing loops, I just like looping things out and putting drums in. I was like, oh, you can change the MIDI of the loop. Like if yeah. I put that drum here, like, I was just like, you know, trying to p- learn how to use the software, I suppose. Um, and then, yeah, and then we got, but yeah, fast forward to two thousand eight, we got um, Ableton from a mate, and I was we just got a bunch of samples and you're just like, this is how music is, but this is how electronic music is made. This is how, and I think I'd had an early version of Cubase on that G4 as well and tried to learn how to use Cubase, but I had no idea what was going on with relation to setting the tempo of a track or anything like that. Yeah. And I just like free formed it. Oh man, I should try it. It's probably still on that computer. If I can, if that thing will even turn on, it was a remix of, the prayer by block party i remember I that it, i sent it to triple j and it would have man it would have been so out of time but like, i think the idea was kind of like interesting it but was it like was a uh, remix it was like uh it wasn't 174 it was like kind of it was break beady but at like 140 or slower like i i remember the drum beat because you were like it's a different kind of drum feel yeah. I, me- I remember i remember you showing me that um, but yeah, so we had Ableton and, uh, we were starting to tinker around cause I had a laptop for, by this time I had a laptop f- for university that I was doing, using for uni. Um, so yeah, we'd been kind of tinkering around on GarageBand for a while leading up to this. Then I had a laptop for uni and that that's when I first got Ableton, which is the first computer program that like music did music and i was like oh this is easy to use i understand what the timing thing does you can drop in like this synthesizer or this noise or this drum and like make this loop and like oh i think and i was starting to understand a lot more about songs as well like drum and bass particularly like because we'd started djing it more like understanding the sequence and things like that and so I took my laptop because I had to do work for my degree while we were away and I had my laptop and I remember being in Norway with the laptop, sharing a hotel room with you and you being like, oh, let, like, give me a shot, like, what's going on? And we worked on this song. The Fine Line. Which brings me to my... Which brings me to this week's demo, John. Yeah, hi. I'd like a plate of big tunes and a serving of piping hot bangers on the side. When you started talking about it, I felt like this was going to be the demo. And I haven't heard this song in six years, maybe. Wow. Six years? I haven't. Or I haven't heard the song in like ten years because no. it's like I feel like we. It was on a. It was on a CD. 
It was on a CD we found on on a, on, a, on the computer that was like, this is, um, it was like in a, it, it was in the CD, you know how we get, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm pretty sure we found it on a CD and played it, but continue. Sorry. This uh, week's demo. Yeah, this week, so this week's demo comes from, like, we would have come home and worked on it a bit more, but I remember it started in that hotel room in Porsgrund. No, it would. It was in um, Drummond. Drummond. Drummond Bass. That's right. Because we want to start a drum bass club in Drummond called Drummond Bass. Yeah. Um, shout out to TV, who's going to make it happen. <laughs> Um, also, sh- also shout out to uh, Nor- Norwegian Massive. Um, uh, yeah, so we t- it's in the started in the hotel there, and it is like, for how does it? Um, how do you remember it? Because I, I haven't listened. I intentionally haven't listened to it, and I'm just gonna press play on it so we can both listen to it um, together. But what do you remember? Of- a lot of piano in the intro. Um, oh, yeah, because that would have been one of the only MIDI kind of instruments we are like, oh, there's a piano. Like- it's probably... This is before we knew anything about F being the fundamental sub bass note. So, I imagine it's probably in C. It probably drops on a C. Um, I also remember it being like... I remember being a good song. This... Correct me if I'm wrong, Jeff, but is this not the first song that we had be play- played out by someone? Didn't Jazza no, play this? The first song we ca- had played out was "I Feel So Different," coming on strong. Coming on Which strong. Ma- Maybe that can be next week's demo because I found that one as well. <sighs> oh, yeah, coming on. S- okay, then the fine line. I don't remember the drop at all. All I remember is. Dun 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 dun. Yeah, that's that's vaguely ringing a bell to me as well. Yes. Shall we see if you're right? Yeah, let's. If we're right, let's dive in. Because I don't remember much at all, other than yeah, piano and we knew nothing. We knew we were just laying sounds on top of each other. We. I mean, we didn't know learn about e- what EQ was even for another year after this. Like, we didn't yeah. know what the fuck was going on. Um, all right. I think it's in Dropbox. So, just uh, dive in.
that was the first drum and bass song we made on Ableton. Yeah, but I would say that that that's that wasn't sits like for me as the first drum and bass song we ever made. Yeah, that's the one. There wasn't just like a twenty-five second demo on Garage Band. Yeah, that's not that bad. I remember working. Yeah. I remember working on that at Byron's house in Baron's Court. Yes. And I also remember working on something else in Byron's house that you would you said is too biblical. That was when you used the the term biblical to first describe some of the way I write music. I think it was also the sound you were using. It sounded like some sort of like you know kazoo crossed with a, a harp or something that sounded like you know there was someone eating a lot of dates nearby. You were near the Hanging Gardens of Babylon, and you've just paid a uh, the piper to and that's not racist because that's what music sounded like then google it <laughs> um but that's just pretty good i honestly if sub focus had produced that song you could give those parts to sub focus cut up the voc if the vocal sample was better if the if every, basically if it was everything was better if everything was like heaps better some of the songwriting is not that bad there's there's this is I mean again this is the first time you're hearing like us like actually come to grips with like a bit of structure and a bit of like you know it is just the same note progression all the way through but like there is a and even there that, like, some crescendos and dynamic yeah, changes there's there's some basic kind of songwriting stuff that's that's present. The kick is the drums. The drums are Ableton stock drums. Yeah, absolutely. But it's not that bad. It's ba- it's bad, it's, but it's it's not as bad as I thought it would be. No, I don't even think it's it's bad. It's funny to look back, you know, to <sighs> you know compare that to Paper Birds. Yeah. Maybe maybe we should try and make a, a version of Paper Birds that produced like that. <laughs> That would be a colossal waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but I think I think it was quite quite cool. Um, quite uh, you know, I, the play on the 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 repeating lead line, if you will, and then the the chords and then sound like a little duck or something. I remember um, something I I remember about this song is trying to make the hi hat, recognizing in other songs that there was like a well, what is a shuffle, essentially, and not understanding that that would be done with breaks or anything like that, that it should be done with a hi-hat. So that's why the hi-hat yeah. pattern is... Um, I remember yeah. like writing that MIDI in and being like, yeah, now it's going to sound like a high contrast track. And it yeah. didn't. <laughs> We've cracked the code. Yeah. Um, and, you know, like the drum the drum rolls as well. Yeah, it's got no effects. It's got nothing. It's like... But it's... It's the it's a, it's literally just an idea, and the idea is okay. It's pretty good. It's not bad. It's not bad. We've come a long way, haven't we, John? Yeah, we have. What a journey! What a journey! What a um, journey! Uh, is there anything else you'd like to say about the demo, or anything else, or shall we? Um. No, nah. no. Nah, I think that's. I think we've covered a go- lot of good ground. I think it's been a good yeah, one. Been, yeah, it's it's just. Uh, I suppose it's come been one of those ones that just flowed. We again, we just thought we we're gonna talk about performance and a bunch of other things, and I didn't even know I had that demo until the other day when I went through that old hard drive. Man, and I was that's, like, oh, that's got to be surprised, Jono. Gold on that hard drive. Less than you think. That um, funny photos. I'd like to see those. Uh, I mean, if you if if there was a highlight of my of mine from the podcast, I think it would have to be if Seal can be kissed by a rose, then a person can be shocked by a doodle. That's probably the funniest thing I've heard in the last week. <laughs> I'm glad you like that one. Uh, just improvising, bro. Just improvising. Uh, that's funny. 
right. All right, bro. Uh, Thank you for today's let's... conversation, buddy. Thank you for making Thank- me laugh. Thank you for taking me down some memories. Thank you for reminding me of seminal parts of my life that I've forgotten. Thank and you for telling me about the first time you made it with a woman. Thanks. Next week, I'll tell you about the first time I made it with a <laughs> 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 All right, man. I love you. I right, love you too, buddy. Bye. See ya. Thanks for listening to this week's podcast. Uh, make sure you subscribe to us on your podcast app and keep up to date with all new episodes. They're going to be coming out once a week. We are Echo and Sidetrack on Facebook and Instagram. Uh, on Twitter, we are Echo Sidetrack. Go listen to our music on Spotify, Apple Music, Tidal, YouTube, or wherever your ears consume happiness. Lots of love, people.